It is 6.30 in the morning here at the Art of Animation Skyliner Station. Why am I here at 6.30 in the morning? Because we are doing early entry at Hollywood Studios, and this morning we are doing it with all the bells and whistles. We're going to be using Disney Genie Plus. We're going in for early entry, and we're going to get an individual attraction lightning lane for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. How quickly can we get this park done? Let's find out. Hi-ho, everybody. This is Rob with Ear Scouts coming to you really early in the morning from the Art of Animation Skyliner Station. The Skyliner Station doesn't even open until 7, but this is actually only the first of two Skyliner lines you're going to have to wait in. When you stay at these value resorts, you still have to transfer at Caribbean Beach. Believe it or not, we're here at 6.30. Early entry starts at 8 today. So we're here an hour and a half before early entry begins. We were not even the first people in line. So it is very competitive to be first in line here at Art of Animation. Am I saying that you need to be here at 6.30? Not necessarily. The reason I'm here is so I can kind of show you as the morning goes on, what the line looks like at various times. We're here during the spring break period. In today's video, we are gonna be using all of the bells and whistles. We're gonna be using early entry, which is a perk that you get when you stay at a Disney hotel or a qualifying Disney partner hotel. We'll throw the list of those up on the screen right now so you can see if your hotel is on it. When you stay at one of those hotels, you are allowed to enter the park 30 minutes before the regular entry time. We're gonna show you what that process looks like today. We're also going to be using one of the other perks you get when you stay at a Disney hotel, and that is the ability to book an individual attraction lightning lane starting at 7 a.m. That's not going to be nearly as competitive as booking our first Genie Plus lightning lane at 7 a.m. because everybody in the park can book Genie Plus at 7 a.m., not just folks staying at a resort hotel. One thing that is important to know, though, not everyone who gets the early entry benefit also gets that 7 a.m. booking of the individual attraction lightning lane. We'll post it here on the screen so you can see which hotels qualify for that 7 a.m. individual attraction lightning lane perk. When you're doing this strategy, 7 a.m. becomes a really complicated moment because that's when the Skyliner station is gonna open, although fingers crossed it usually does open a little bit earlier than that. Basically, right there at 7 a.m., you've also gotta book that very first Genie Plus Lightning Lane. And for us, we're also going to try to book an individual traction lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance. I'm not so worried about the individual traction lightning lane. If you want your best pick of times, you'll want to do it relatively early, but you don't need to do that one right at 7 a.m. on the dot. The reason we're trying to get everything done so early today is because we're here for the grand opening of the newest restaurant in Toy Story Land. We're going to be going to Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. That reservation is at 1.30 p.m. So my goal is to see, can we do everything in this park? We're gonna be doing seven rides, three shows, that's 10 attractions. We're gonna to try to get it all done before our 1.30 p.m. lunch reservation. Is it gonna be possible? I'm gonna be honest, y'all, I don't know, but we're gonna find out. It is 6.47. Looks like they're starting to get ready. A lot of times, if the cast members are ready and the Skyliner is ready to go, they will open it a little bit early. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of noise come from the Skyliner station, so I think we're about to get ready. It's about 6.55. We've been lined up here, basically so that we're ready to board the Skyliner right when they open it up. It is four minutes early and we are on the very first Skyliner gondola of the day. And of course we land right at 7 a.m. So I have got to jump on and get our individual traction lightning lane and Genie Plus, but thankfully there is no line here. So we're just gonna walk right on to Hollywood Studios. It is 7.07 .07 and we have just arrived here at Hollywood Studios. Looks like we are relatively close to the front of the line. 
So if you watched our other early entry video that we did here at Hollywood Studios, it's actually probably my favorite early entry video that we've done. We did it two ways. So we did it one morning where we went to Slinky Dog Dash first, and then the other morning we went to Rise the Resistance first, and we kind of gave you a split screen view of what those two different early entry options look like. If you haven't seen that, I definitely recommend checking that out. We'll put a link to it in the description down below. But this morning, we're actually gonna use a completely different strategy. We're gonna start out today at Tower of Terror. The reason we're gonna do that is because it's right here at the front of the park, and our plan is to get a Genie Plus Lightning Lane for Slinky Dog Dash right away. Plus, we have Rise of the Resistance as an individual attraction Lightning Lane. So, no reason to rope drop either of those. So when you come in for early entry here at Hollywood Studios, your first stop is gonna be security. And then after that, there's gonna be a sign that points you to where you should go for early entry. They're gonna scan your magic band. They only need to scan one member of your party. So if you're a large group, make sure you're all together and then they'll scan one magic band. They'll let you all through. Next up, you'll come to the turnstiles to enter the park. They will let you tap in earlier than the actual early entry time. Once that happens, we're all gonna sort of go in and head to our first ride, and that's actually where most of our early entry wait will be. Essentially, here at Hollywood Studios, your rope drop for early entry is at the first ride of the day. So we're actually not looking great on the Genie Plus front right now. We made one of those big mistakes that a lot of people make. When you're at a Disney resort, a lot of times you'll jump on that Disney resort Wi-Fi. But guess what happens when you get on the Skyliner or your Disney bus? You lose that Wi-Fi signal. And if you lose it at just the right moment, which is exactly what happened to us today, then you're not gonna be able to get your first lightning lane right at 7 a.m. because basically you don't have internet access for that little bit. Always, always, for that 7 a.m. lightning lane, turn off the Disney Wi-Fi. Use your cell phone signal. It is almost always going to be more reliable. Fingers crossed that we're going to be able to back that time up a little bit. Uh, we're going to keep playing the Genie slots while we're right here in line. If you're not aware of what I mean by playing the Disney Genie slots, what that means is you're going to go into your tip board screen or your My Day view. There's three little dots on your reservation tap on those three little dots, a menu's gonna pop up, you're gonna choose modify plan. And then it's gonna bring you to kind of a new tip board view with the ride you have booked at the top and the time you have it booked for. Below that is the time you can book it for right now. By pulling down the screen and refreshing, you can hope to get a better return time. I also did a similar thing when I was getting the Rise of the Resistance Lightning Lane. That one works a little bit differently. I'm gonna show you on the screen what that process looks like, but the key there is it's gonna show you different time windows you can select, but here's the catch. When you tap in and select it, there's a good chance that time window's already gone, and it's just gonna give you the closest available. If you don't like that time, just back out and then tap on that time again. Just keep repeating this process and you'll see that the return times will change. We went ahead and backed our Rise the Resistance Lightning Lane. I think we have it from like 8.50 until 9.50. I like to get Rise the Resistance as early as I can because that ride goes down a lot. When it goes down, you're gonna get the ability to come back later, but if it's really late in the day, the ride might not come back during that day, in which case you just get a refund, you would not be able to ride the ride. Quick time check, it is 725, and it is a whole new world here in front of Hollywood Studios. There are a ton of people lined up, so this is why it's good to get here early. It's about 18 minutes early, and we are starting to tap in. Once we tap in, we will be heading to our first ride, so everybody's gonna go in different directions. We're gonna be heading down Sunset Boulevard over to Tower of Terror. Just FYI, don't run. When you come into the park, don't run. There's really no reason to run. You're either gonna be the second in line or the 10th in line, and honestly, that's not gonna make a huge difference. We are gonna have a terrifying start to our day. And I'm just talking about getting that Genie Plus fixed. I'm not even talking about Tower of Terror. <laughs> we are gonna get it fixed. We're gonna keep playing those Genie slots while we're waiting up here. This is definitely the time to do it too. 
Whenever you're just stopped somewhere and there's nothing else going on, that is the perfect time to play those Disney Genie slots. Anytime you've got downtime, just go ahead, modify your next lightning lane. See if you can get it up a little bit earlier because the sooner you tap in, the sooner you can book your next ride. It is 7.56. It looks like it is time to check in to the Hollywood Tower Hotel. That is a great way to wake yourself up in the morning. I love doing Tower Terror first thing. It's so much fun. We have not had any luck backing up that first Genie Plus Lightning Lane. We've got it for Slinky Dog Dash at 1025. So that means it's really important during this early entry period that we knock off some of those harder to book Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. We're gonna head over to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway because it's right near us. So it'll be easy to knock that one off. I would normally say we should go do Rock and Roller Coaster, but that ride is right now down for refurbishment. It's actually not opening again until summer. So it's a really long refurbishment. There's some rumors that maybe there's going to be a change of band at that ride. Perhaps it's no longer gonna be Aerosmith. I heard a rumor of Queen, but I think those are all just rumors at this point. It is a really long refurbishment though. The rides that we're most worried about, these are the rides that tend to disappear first from Genie Plus Lightning Lanes. Tower of Terror, Slinky Dog Dash, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, normally Rock and Roller Coaster, we don't have to worry about that one, and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. My plan is for us to go ahead and knock out Mickey and Minnie's now, then we're gonna head into Galaxy's Edge because we've got that early lightning lane for Rise of the Resistance. So we'll just go ahead and hopefully knock out Millennium Falcon here in early entry. It's gonna be totally fine if we can't back up that first lightning lane for Slinky Dog because all of our most difficult to book rides will already be ridden. Posted 10 minute wait, actual wait, zero minutes. That's my kind of wait. Nothing can stop us now. I'll tell you how we're gonna make it happen. Absolutely nothing will go wrong. Oh. So believe it or not, while we were on that ride, God bless Eric. Eric is the other half of Ear Scouts. Did you never see in the videos? You might see him every now and then sort of peeking in. But while we were on that ride, Eric was determined. He was like, we are going to get this lightning lane for Slinky Dog Dash. He got it backed up all the way to 835. That's basically park opening. That's pretty much as good as you're gonna get. So, ear hats off to Eric. That was a really impressive score on the Genie Plus Lightning Lane, but we're not gonna change plans. We're still gonna head into Galaxy's Edge because we've still got about a few minutes left of early entry. I'd like to go ahead and do Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. We would probably have to get a later return time on that one if we booked it with Genie Plus. And this day is going, going, going. I wanna keep it going. I'm also curious just to see, for those of you who aren't using Genie Plus, how much can we get done in this early entry period using this strategy? It is one minute before official park opening. Rise of the Resistance has a two hour Wait, what? 
What? Yeah. The line is so backed up, it's going into the backstage area of this park. That's insane. The individual attraction lighting lane today was a whopping $25. But if this was your only day in this park and that was a must do ride for you, that was probably $25 well spent. And I feel really bad for all those folks who are in that line right now because in a way they kind of did everything right. They came here for early entry, they went to rise and yeah, oh wow. 130 minute posted wait right now. 130 minutes as the park opens. So you remember at the top of this video when I was getting into the Skyliner crazy early? I know a lot of you guys were probably like, this guy is nuts. Why would you get there so early? The reason you do that is so you're at the front of that line so that you're not at the back of that line and waiting 130 minutes for your first ride of the day. In case you are wondering if today's gonna be a busy day, yes, it is going to be a very busy day. It's actually really rare that I pilot the Millennium Falcon. Usually because I'm filming, I just offer everybody else, I'm like who wants to be a pilot? Cause I'll sit in the back and be an engineer. I'm a really good engineer. <laughs> I've done it a lot, but it's kind of easy being an engineer while you're filming at the same time. But today I was a pilot, which was kind of a fun change of pace. So we could tap in for Slinky Dog right now. We're in our return window. But we are doing so great, you guys, that I think we actually have time to relax and enjoy some breakfast. I feel like the secret is definitely out about the Ronto morning wrap, but the sleeper hit here at Ronto Roasters for breakfast is the overnight oats. They are so delicious. They're really beautiful and Instagrammable. They look like they come from outer space, which I appreciate. And they're just really tasty. They're a little on the sweet side, so if you're not a fan of super sweet things, you might want to steer clear. But if you're okay with your oats being a little sweet, a little fruity, these are the ones to get. And then of course, the black calf. It's got like cocoa puffs on top, and it's just this really amazing mixture of cold brew coffee and sweet, creamy deliciousness. Bottoms up. Man, that has got some kick. This is the one I recommend. Stir it up when you get it. It's prettier when you don't stir it, but it tastes better when you stir it all together. If you've watched most of our Genie videos and our early entry videos too, what we're doing right now, we almost never do this. We almost never take the time to sit down and enjoy breakfast. We might get a cup of coffee and get it to go, but when you're using all of these perks, when you're paying, uh, let's face it, a lot of money, this is not cheap. It does make a really big difference in your day. We are gonna be jogging back and forth a little bit between Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge. Luckily, they're right next to each other. So it might look like we're jumping around the park a lot. We're actually really not going that far at all because these lands butt right up against each other. So now that we have tapped in at this lightning lane, we can go ahead and book the next one. Quick refresher for those who aren't sure, you can always book your next lightning lane either after you've tapped in at the most recent lightning lane that you've booked or after waiting two hours since you booked that most recent lightning lane. 
There is an asterisk there for Lightning Lanes that you book before the park opens. That two hour clock doesn't start counting until park opens. So always remember that. If you book something at 7 a.m. for later in the day, you think, oh, at nine I can book something. But if the park opened at nine, you actually have to wait until 11. Now let's go ride Slinky. <laughs> dog is done and man it was so beautiful riding that ride today the sky was just perfect the sun was in just the right spot love it when that happens someone actually asked in the video they were like rob you seem to love slinky dog so much isn't it just like a kid's coaster but that's kind of what's so great about slinky dog yes it's a kid coaster it's designed so that really little kids can ride it and enjoy it and not be scared by it and yet the magic of it is for adults, for grown-ups, it is still so much fun to ride. And that is really tough to pull off, honestly. I think that is one of the most impressive coasters in all of Orlando, just because it manages to thread that needle. Such an amazing ride. I mean, no matter how many times I do that ride, it still blows me away. Just the scale of it. It is the most epic ride in all of Walt Disney World. Well, this is a rare treat. Mando and Grogu are here. How adorable is that Grogu? It's amazing. I think up until now, my favorite meet and greet was Kevin uh, over in Animal Kingdom. That tops it. That is incredible. We are headed back to Toy Story Land, and you know what? This is not even gonna be the last time we're gonna go into Toy Story Land. I kinda just wanna finish out Toy Story Land. Even though we are gonna come back to that land for lunch, I don't wanna have to worry about those rides anymore. I wanna get those rides out of the way. So we've still got Toy Story Mania and Alien Swirling Saucers to do over there. But after that, guess what, my friends? We only have one Lightning Lane left to book in this park. That is for Star Tours. For those who are not aware, Star Tours is probably the easiest lightning lane to book in all of Walt Disney World. No. Maybe living with the land. It's probably, it's, it's Star Tours and living with the land, which is not fair, honestly, because those are two amazing rides. They should be a lot harder to book because they are that great, but they're pretty easy to book. So we're gonna have that one last lightning lane to book and then we've got some shows to see because you cannot have a perfect day here at Hollywood Studios without seeing some of the amazing shows that are here. So my three must do shows in this park are for the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. Even if you don't love Frozen, just trust me, it is a great show. It is super funny and it's a little bit different every time you see it. I really enjoy that one. Second one is Indiana Jones Stunt Spectacular. It really is spectacular. It is mind blowing what they put on that stage multiple times a day. And then I would say after that, it is Muppet Vision 3D. I'm a sucker for Muppets and it is like the best episode of the Muppets ever and it's in 3D. There are two other really big shows you should consider. One is Beauty and the Beast. That happens over near Fantasmic, which brings me to the other show that you should really consider, which is Fantasmic. Fantasmic is an amazing show, but it only runs at night. Since we're not gonna be here at night, we won't be seeing Fantasmic in this video, but I'll make sure to include it in a future video because it is definitely something you should check out while you're here. I know 
that I said we were going to do everything in Toy Story Land before we left, but there's only one truly predictable thing about a day at Walt Disney World, and that is that at least one unpredictable thing will happen. The unpredictable thing that happened, we played the genie slots for a solid 10 minutes and could not get a decent return time for swirling saucers. Typically, alien swirling saucers is a gimme. When unpredictable things happen, you just have to go with it. You gotta be flexible, adjust your plans accordingly, and that's what we did. We're gonna head over here to Star Tours, the old reliable. We were able to grab a lightning lane for that basically right now, so we're gonna head that way. But now that we're out in this area of the park, we're gonna switch gears and focus on all the shows that are over here, because basically all of our shows are right in this area. Hopefully, we're gonna knock out all three of those shows and Star Tours, and then we'll just be able to end our day at Toy Story Land with lunch and a spin on those swirling saucers. I'm not actually the captain. You're looking for this rebel spy. Have you seen her? No one on this transport could possibly be a spy. I have probably ridden Star Tours like, I don't even know. I can't even count. I mean, probably a hundred times. I mean, it's an absurd number. What's great about Star Tours is you always get a different sequence. Now, there's only so many sequences though. So usually you end up seeing at least something that you've seen before. This time I saw a sequence I had never seen before. The pod racer scene, I've actually never gotten that one. So that was really, really cool. I also did something else I don't normally do, and that is I booked a lightning lane for a show. So I don't typically do lightning lanes for shows. You really don't need them for shows, but they are nice to have for this reason. You can come in about 15 minutes before the show is going to start and be guaranteed to get a decent seat somewhere near the front. So that's what I did for Indiana Jones. It's from 1130 to 1145. The show is at 12. So. Right now it is 11.30. As a quick reminder, our goal was to have everything done by our 1.30 lunch. Can we see three shows and do our last ride before 1.30? I don't know, let's find out. That show is amazing when you watch it from any angle, but when you get to see it from the front row, I mean, there is no way you're gonna get that shot that we just got if you're not in the front row. And that's the benefit, honestly, of using Genie Plus. You could get in the front row by waiting like 45 minutes to an hour uh, for perfect seats in the standby queue, but when you have the Genie, it does let you come in a little bit closer to showtime and still get a great seat. We just missed our window for seeing the last Frozen show before lunch, so we have to wait till after lunch for that. But I think we're gonna be able to get everything else done. We're headed over to Grand Avenue for Muppet Vision 3D. That is definitely another must do when you're here at Hollywood Studios. Let's go check it out. Muppet Vision 3D does technically have a lightning lane. I've honestly never used it because I've never needed to. This theater has a massive capacity, but right now the line is pretty long. It is snaking around outside. So I guess it's a good test to find out, do you sometimes need a lightning lane for Muppet Vision? I'm still guessing no, but we'll find out in just a little bit. Turns out, do not need a lightning lane for Muppet Vision 3D. No one flew me, flew me.
So even when there is a line snaking outside of the building, do you need a lightning lane for Muppet Vision 3D? No. <laughs> the theater was only half full, so yeah. I, I can't imagine a day where you would need a lightning lane for that, but hey, it's there. If you really want to book it, you can. Speaking of lightning lanes, we are going to go tap in for our last lightning lane we're going to do here in this park, and that is over at Alien Swirling Saucers. That is going to put us in Toy Story Land yet again, right on time for our lunch at this new restaurant that I am so excited about. Today is opening day of Roundup Rodeo Barbecue, which is the newest barbecue joint in Andy's backyard. Barbecue is one of my favorite food groups, especially when it comes with mac and cheese and all the fixins. But first, we gotta spin on those alien swirling saucers. Let's go do it. Three, two, one. Another thing you can do whenever you're running late for a table service reservation, as you're getting close to the restaurant, fire up the app. You can actually check in at the restaurant on the app. That's probably what we're gonna do as we're getting off this ride. We're gonna be firing up My Disney Experience and checking in over at Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. I think the word that best sums up this newest restaurant here at Toy Story Land is adorable. The detail that was put into every corner of that restaurant, you can see the love that was put into it. But what really takes it over the top are the cast members. All the cast members do such a great job of making you feel like the newest toy on the block. And it's just a really fun, interactive experience. I love when everybody in the restaurant freezes because Andy's coming. It's just a really cute, fun experience. The food is good, it's not amazing, but it's not bad. If I had guests visiting Disney World who'd never experienced this before, I would definitely put it on the list of things to consider, especially if you've got little ones who are fans of Toy Story, I would say this is probably gonna be a must do. We are here at our final stop of the day for the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. Even if you do not love Frozen, I promise, you're gonna have so much fun at this show. You should definitely put it on your list. We'll leave you with some footage of it. But first I wanna talk about what we could do with the rest of this day, because we've only touched the surface of what we could do with Genie Plus for sure. All those rides we rode during early entry where we didn't use Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, we could ride all those again if we wanted to. We could also go to a different park, which is what we're planning to do. We're gonna go on over to Animal Kingdom. I think we're probably gonna be able to ride everything over there with a Genie Plus Lightning Lane because we have plenty of time left in our day. If you can swing it, this strategy is amazing when it comes to park hopping because we're gonna have done pretty much all the things I would put on a must-do list for Hollywood Studios, and we've got plenty of time to go park hop and get a ton of stuff done in a second park. So whether you wanna ride things multiple times or you wanna park hop without sacrificing the key rides you care most about, this strategy definitely makes all of that possible. Well, if you enjoyed experiencing what a day with all the bells and whistles looks like here at Hollywood Studios, give this video a like and then subscribe to our channel and ring that bell so you'll be notified whenever new videos like this come out. Until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Now let's go check out for the first time in forever. Citizens of the kingdom of Hollywood land, we proudly present to you the story of Anna and Elsa. It was a dark and stormy night. Oh, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Um, okay. In this story, there are four ladies that live in a house in Miami. Dorothy Rose Blanchard. <laughs> That's not it. Did you sleep through all of Arendelle History 101? Okay. That class was virtual and the screen was constantly frozen. <laughs> causing her to accidentally throw ice all over the ballroom. They called her a witch. They called her a sorcerer. She impaled somebody at the party. It was hilarious. They were like, ah. That did not happen. <laughs> what?
party was I at? <laughs> <laughs>